So you are a beginner into this sewing world. You've got a pattern in front of you that you would like to trace. Maybe it's nested or maybe you just want to preserve it. And you're wondering how the heck are you supposed to trace the pattern? I am here to tell you. <laughs> Hey everyone, I'm Sarah and don't mind my hair, it's the end of the day, although it doesn't look much better in the beginning of the day. But we're going to go over how to trace a sewing pattern. If you are a beginner and you're wondering how to do this, you're going to need two things. One is something to trace on and one is something to trace with. So you already have your pattern and what you're going to do is you're going to get to use some tracing paper. This can be anything from tissue paper, maybe you got tissue, you know, sheets of tissue paper, that works fine, or you can get you a roll of tissue paper, and that is very convenient. I've got my youngest playing with trains in the background. I hope it's not too distracting. But a roll of tissue paper is like super convenient. You can buy it off of Amazon. It's sold as medical paper. It's like the exam paper, you know, that they roll out on the table. Um, it's the same sort of idea. It's that translucent white paper and it's easy to see through. So you can just trace your pattern, put it right on top of your pattern and trace her out. Um, what do you trace with? I would recommend doing something like a pen that isn't going to smear. So I would stay away from pencil, although I've been guilty of using a pencil because I've got three kids and I can just grab whatever writing utensil I can find these days. I swear I buy 5,000 pens and I can't find one. But <laughs> so if you can avoid a pencil, I would recommend doing that. If you can find a pen that isn't going to like smear on you, like I like a bald um, a ball head pin that works fine or a felt head. The felt thing though, depending on the pin, you have to be careful because it can bleed through the tracing paper. So just give it a, you know, a little bit of a test on, on a, on the corner or whatever and see how your writing utensil is acting. And then it's just a matter of putting the uh, paper over your pattern and tracing away. Now what things do I trace? I do not trace everything because I've got limited time and why go through the effort even if you have all the time in the world, right? You could spend that time sewing. So the things that I trace are the outline of it. So I don't worry about any of, if the, if the pattern happens to have the seam allowance as an outline, I do not trace that over. I just do the absolute outline, the one that you're going to actually cut. I will trace what pattern it is, what size it is, not trace, I will write what pattern it is, what size it is, and the seam allowance. And then the last thing, um, or one of the last things, is that I will put the grain line on it, or I will put, if it's cut on a fold. Okay, so it's either gonna have a grain line, or it's gonna have the fold arrows. It's gonna have one or the other. Now the last thing is that I will do any marks that are relevant. So if a sleeve has little X's because it's gonna be gathered, then I will transfer those little X's so I know where the gathers are supposed to go to and from. And if it has a mark like a placket or something, I will transfer that over. Um, although you could transfer that after the fact onto your fabric. I've been guilty of that a number of times, and that's just fine. So once I am done with all of that, I will put each size, each individual size, into separate Ziploc bags, and then I will store them into manila folders. I found that that's the best way to store patterns, and I will tape up the side of manila folders with packing tape, not scotch tape. I have learned the hard way that scotch tape will just rip down the middle after a couple rounds of use, and so that's no good but I will do the manila folder thing and then put them into a filing cabinet. If you don't have a filing cabinet, what I used to use are these little like bin, they're the same size, they're just in bin size from Amazon. So I hope all of that is helpful. I have lots of other videos in this beginner's uh, heirloom series. So go check out those videos. If you have any questions, put them down in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them. And as always, I appreciate y'all for watching and I hope to catch y'all next time.